Hi there, Shahar here from Waves again. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about reverbs and delays. What they are, how they're similar to each other, how they differ from each other, what they're used for, and how to set them up inside your DAW. A delay is a repeat of the signal, an echo. Hello, low, low, low. That's a delay. A reverb is often made up of a million little delays, so that when they're put together, they sound like a tail of the signal. Imagine walking into a church or a cave. You say hello, it's going to kind of fade out at the end. It doesn't sound like an exact repeat, but it gives it a sort of lush quality. So they're used for similar things. Typically today, when you record a source, you're going to record it close mic So everything is right up against the microphone, and then when you play it back, it sounds like it's right up at the speaker. One of the things you can do with reverb and delay is push it back a little bit. And that gives things a sense of depth. You can give different elements of the mix a different reverb and a different delay, and then it really sounds like every part of the mix is in a different space. Let's give a listen to what a reverb sounds like, what a delay sounds like, and look at the different types of reverbs and delays. Here we go. So let's start with a reverb. I have a snare track here. Let's listen to it with no reverb on it. And then I send it to an AUGS and I put Waves Rverb plugin on it. Let's pull up the drum plate. There are several different kinds of reverbs. Springs, halls, chambers. We're going to go with the plate for now. Here's what it sounds like with the reverb. Again without. And with. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of the parameters on the reverb that we can play with. The first is the wet-dry. If you're using a reverb in a send-return setup, you typically want it 100% wet. That means you don't have any of the direct signal going through the plugin because you have it coming out of the track. If you use it as an insert right on the track, you may want to pull the wet-dry to, let's say, 50% wet and 50% dry. Wet means the reverb signal, dry means the direct signal. The other thing is the size. The size determines how big is the room that you put it in and how long is the decay of the tail. So I'm going to make the size and time quite a bit bigger and longer here just so we can hear what it does. That's very long. All right, let's pull it back to where it was. The third thing is pre-delay. Pre-delay determines when does the reverb start after the direct signal hits it. Does it start right away? That's when the pre-delay is at zero. Or is there a bit of a time lapse between when the direct signal hits the reverb and when the tail actually begins? There are a couple of different reasons why you may want to use a pre-delay. The first is to separate the reverb from the direct signal. When you put a reverb on something, it sometimes loses definition because it becomes a bit of a wash. If you pull up your pre-delay, then first you hear the direct, dry, defined signal. And then, slightly afterwards, the decay starts. So you get the best of both worlds, both the dry signal and the effect. The second reason why you may want to use a pre-delay is for rhythmic effect. Imagine a snare hits the reverb and the reverb starts right away. It may sound pa. Whereas if you increase the pre-delay, it'll sound something like pa. The direct hit of the snare and then the reverb tail that starts afterwards. So I'm going to increase the pre-delay quite a bit here. So you you can hear that effect. I'm going to pull it back to zero. And again, long pre-delay. That gives you an idea. All right, before we move on, let's listen to a vocal through a reverb. I'm going to pull up the big warm plate preset on the R-verb here. Here's what it sounds like with no reverb. Summertime, and I'm driving away. And with a reverb. Summertime, and I'm driving away. So immediately you can hear it sounds more lush. It has some depth, right? Gives it that third dimension. And it sounds a little more produced. Let's hear the full track with the reverb on the vocals and the snare, and then without it. 
Typically, I wouldn't use the same reverb settings on my vocals and my snare, but for this example, it'll do. Okay, here's a song without the reverb. Summertime, and I'm driving away. And with it. Summertime, and I'm driving away. All right, so as you heard, that took the vocals and the snare and put them in their own space. It gave the whole track a bit more depth. 